One, two, and three. Gusta, Gusta Janice, I don't know how you even pronounce that. She's a slut, she's this pro-feminist, blah, 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 blah. She's a good looking girl, man, she's beautiful. But dude, not worth it. Stay away from this girl. Stay away from this woman, she is dangerous to your health. Welcome back, guys. I'm so happy. Christmas came early this year. Uh, Fresh and Fit got exposed by Abba and Preach. I'm not too familiar with their page, but God bless these men. Thank you so much. They did what had to be done, and I'm so ready to watch this video. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm so excited. Let's see what they got to say. Hyped up, shoddy. Today's topic. All right, seems like the guys from Fresh and Fit are really upset. We are... Better than you niggas, period. If you want to know our thoughts, I'm going to keep it really brief. Right? I don't have much thoughts on their platform. Are they doing some good things for some people? I'm sure. I'm no doubt. I'm not even denigrating that. We just came at them for their ideas with regards to uh, paying for box and all this stuff. Thought it was full of shit. I'm like, yo, real last niggas don't pay for box. Even more, what I find really distasteful is you come to find out that Myron gains himself, right? The so-called pickup artist, the master, has his own seeking arrangements account, his own profile, all right? Yes, yes, I'm so happy he brought this up. This is so important. How are you gonna take dating advice from a man who has to pay to get girls? How? And mind you, I'll insert a screenshot. Um, Fresh and Fit posted that, oh yeah, like we've been very open that we have a seeking arrangements profile and I don't pay for girls. Seeking arrangements is a sugar daddy website sugar daddy it's not just daddy it's sugar meaning that you pay girls no matter how many times he says he does not pay for girls to have sex with him and to fly them out he does that's what a sugar daddy is in fact let's look up the definition of a sugar daddy let's take a peek a rich older man who lavishes gifts on a young woman in return for her company or sexual favors so Yes, you do pay for sex and you do pay women to even consider touching you. Don't take dating advice from men who have to pay girls to do things with them. The advice clearly doesn't work if it's gotten to this point. This man's out here talking about don't pay for box, don't pay for box. It's on a website for sugar daddies and sugar babies. Okay. All right. You want to be a giant hypocrite? Do your thing. Okay. Come to find out, this man's telling girls in the DMs that if they want to come on the platform, they have to fuck. And if they don't, he gets upset about it and he gets all pissed. I'll read it out loud. I'm just being honest and stand by it. I'm not collaborating with you unless we fuck. You have fucked a bunch of dudes I know and aren't special. You can have just said no and kept it moving, but you clearly in your feelings going through all that effort with a poll, etc. Go ahead and screenshot the conversation to Clout Chase. I don't care what 75 Sims said in your story to White Knight. The difference is I say what I want and don't care what you think. They do. That's embarrassing. You see, you see how this is a problem, right? Like, I'll only let you come on the platform if you have sex with me because I clearly lack having sex that you're going to have to have sex with me in order to come on my platform. Like, it reeks of desperation. It's literally so sad. I'll pray for him. These niggas is fronting on some points. That doesn't mean they're not helpful to you. Maybe if you're one of their fans, right? Maybe they help you with finances, fitness. Maybe even they helped you with game. I don't know. But all we talk fair, maybe they do help with finances and whatever else they talk about. But when it comes to dating advice and how they talk to women that no, that's not advice. It's quite literally setting you up for failure. You guys are getting so hyper emotional about this thing. It's funny to me for so-called alpha males. You guys don't seem to have any control over your temper. <laughs> yo, yo. Fuck yeah, get their ass. Right. We get more views than you. We've been on less than you. We work harder than y'all niggas. We cut our hair more than you niggas. Like yo, like, yo. Wait, why is he talking about hair? He has none. You are balding. That word should not be used in his vocabulary whatsoever. We get more girls than y'all niggas. Than y'all, niggas. Oh, no, 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 no. Why are you lying? Cap check. You know you don't get girls. You literally have to bribe them by bringing them onto your podcast and being like, oh, you have to fuck me to get on. Like, that's how you get girls, is by, like, manipulating them, clearly, and paying them. So you don't, you don't get any girls. I know that's a lie. Free! Like, if y'all really, really want to do this, 
This nigga preach is married, probably to a fucking beluga whale somewhere. And y'all niggas talking shit. And how old these niggas are? 40 years old? Yo, yo, old ass niggas too, bro. Like, yo, bro. I wasn't gonna do this! Wait, the, the, the hand symbol? Yo! They always talk about facts over feelings, but they literally brought his wife into this for what reason? No factual, that's just emotion. He's so upset that he has to bring in Preach's wife into this conversation. Let's talk about your sister, Myron. Actually, your name's not even Myron. It's um, Amral Fadul. I don't fucking know. He's just probably jealous that his sister is in medical school and he's here sitting like a fucking loser ranking on women and making shitty content that he thinks is so cool because he gets views. What would your sister say about this podcast? I want to know. Maybe I'll reach out to her and see what she has to say. Mm -hmm. I could have fucking do this. International. But y'all got me hyped now. <laughs> Yo. You're being very emotional now. You're being very emotional, Myron. I'm going to need you to take it down a couple notches, okay? Chill. Daddy, chill. Sugar daddy. <laughs> you guys are not talking, bro. My man, Abba. <laughs> Looks like he got off a camel, hasn't cut his hair in years. <laughs> You're balding. He's projecting. He's so mad that he's balding that he's making fun of someone for not cutting their hair. Bitch, you ain't got no hair to cut. That's why you're so mad. So pressed about this guy not cutting his hair. Embarrassing. See what I'm saying? That's just dope. I go like, we're better than you niggas. We make more money than you niggas. We got a better fucking channel than y'all niggas. We get more views than y'all niggas. The only thing you guys got on us is you guys been on longer. But I guarantee fucking to you, next year, this time, we're going to lap you motherfuckers. Because you know what? Right. Nobody works harder than us. Nope. Period. We make more money. We make more money than you. Blah, blah, blah. Who is the clout chasing one now? Because that's all you're bringing up. I make more money than you. I can be doing it. They need a reality check, and these men, Abba and Preach, God bless y'all, because y'all gave them the reality check that they needed. Look how emotionally triggered they are because you decided to bring up something that they disagree with. You decided to critique their podcast, as anyone should, with that garbage that they speak on there. And they are so emotionally triggered by what you guys have to say because they care about what you have to say. That's why he's so mad. The worst part is that I like, I like to see, I love to see a black man get paid. Get your money. I've never get your money. If your views are stupid, your views are stupid. But if you're getting paid, get your money. Yeah, that's not what I'm here for. There's not a single person that could ever say that we've ever feigned jealousy or gotten mad about other people succeeding. We move at our own pace. Yeah, we've been on the platform long. Congratulations. These men sound so humble. I'm I haven't watched any of their videos, so I don't really know what they talk about, but from this video, they seem so humble. So chill, so respectful. Like, look at them. Like, these people are coming at their wives and saying all this nonsense, screaming, hysterically screaming. And these men are just like, congratulations. Like, get your money, sis. Like, wow. Respect. Mad respect. To me, it's not even that deep. You guys are doing well for yourselves. Good for you. Great. I ain't never been mad at a nigga making money. This is about the idea. So all this talk about clout and all this, you guys have lived in Miami so long and you've been faking your lifestyles for so long that you think everybody is chasing clout, that everybody wants to be with an Instagram baddie. Your whole platform is based around clout chasers. So that's why your mind is warped. Miami's fucked up. They deliberately bring that's clout chasing girls on there to set them up and make them agree with their sexist views. Like... If you guys wanted a really good podcast, you would bring on educated women on feminism and the topics that you talk about in order to have a good progressive discussion. But they don't because they know they're wrong. And you know how I know that they know they're wrong? Because Myron goes by an alias. He doesn't even use his real name because he does not want the information that he's saying to be associated with his real name. He actually got fired from his job for the shit that he posted. Apparently, this is allegedly. Someone commented this on my last video. So I'm going based on that because he did work for the Homeland Department of Security at one point. He no longer works for them. And I wonder why. Probably because HR brought him in and said, you need to take this shit down. It either went of two ways. Either HR brought him in and said, you're fired for this bullshit content that you're posting. Or allegedly, he said, I'm not taking it down and quit. Mm, I'm leaning towards fired because his ego is so big. I'm sure he would never admit that he actually got fired. But that sounds like the more realistic scenario that happened.
That's why the girls you bring on, everyone's like, yo, who are these dumb broads that you bring on? Listen, I'm all for women supporting women, but I'm going to have to agree. A lot of the girls that they bring on the podcast do not, like, they're just not qualified to talk about the things that you guys are bringing up. Like, you guys have a whole clipboard with statistics and shit. Like, they're, they're, they weren't ready for that, number one. And number two, a lot of the girls that you bring on are clout chasing. They're not women who are feminists and who have uh, feminist ideology. Right, because they're all clout chasers. So you guys' mindset is all warped and shit. It's not like that everywhere around the world. Not everyone is about clout. Y'all dumbass niggas with the same tired back, on, same fucking million plaque. We got two hundred thousand dollar plaques now, and we're gonna get a million plaque, and we're gonna get the other channel another mil- to a million as well. And Fresh Channel gonna hit a hundred. Why is he screaming so much? Oh my god! Calm down, you emotional wreck. We are better than you niggas. Period. Fuck out of here, man. You know, I, I love it that these guys call themselves alpha and all this other stuff. It makes me laugh because they got such bitch energy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like when you <laughs> get their ass. They lack integrity. They get upset at the most random stuff. When I was on the podcast and they kicked out that girl, one of the girls inside was like, yo, you're being emotional. Like, no, I'm not being emotional. I was like, bro, like, why are you screaming like this? That's so true. I don't know if you guys saw the episode, but I did. And basically he like kicked out this girl and this girl saying like, That was an emotional decision to kick out the girl from the podcast. That wasn't a logical decision. It was feelings. And he was like, no, no, it wasn't. Like, yes, it is, bro. Like, he's so adamant on, like, portraying that he doesn't have feelings when clearly he does. Look at him screaming. Like, he acts out of emotion nine out of ten times. Kicking a girl off your podcast is an emotional reaction. No wonder these girls come on your podcast and don't respect you. You don't command. Respect is earned. Respect is earned. Say it with me. Respect is earned. I went on that podcast being nothing but fucking respectful. I even befriended Fresh. We were chilling. We were laughing. Hee hee ha ha. And then we sat down for the podcast. And all it was was them disrespecting women, discrediting women. It was despicable how they were talking to us. It was gross. Obviously, I'm not going to respect motherfuckers like that. Are you kidding? No. Respect is earned. And they're right. That's why the girls that go on that podcast are fucking bitches, as they should be. Because they're assholes. So. Respect. You just yell and get them kicked out. You think that's alpha behavior? The idea that you can't even get respect from these ladies is in an indication of the fact that you don't know what you're doing. Oh my God. That was so sexy. What a sexy man. Once again, why are people taking any sort of dating advice or any, any sort of advice from a man who literally is not respected by any of the women who come on his platform? You go to all of his podcasts and you look at the girls sitting there and none of them look comfortable. All of them look like they don't want to be there. Why? Because no one respects him. Alphas are respected and you're not. So you're not an alpha baby. It's hyper emotional. You're just screaming and getting mad. I'm laughing at this because it's pathetic. I don't know what's wrong, but every episode I see you just screaming, getting mad, screaming at ladies, railroading like women who aren't prepared with all these stats and numbers that these ladies... Oh my God, this man, I love you. Exactly. I literally talked about this on my last podcast is they bring girls on there without telling them what the podcast is going to be about anything. And they bring uneducated women on purpose. So imagine you're coming on this podcast, really excited, ha ha, he he. And you're sitting there and all of a sudden he's like, 8% of 20% blah, 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 like just like literally shouting statistics at you. And the girls are like, what the fuck is going on here? Like... He deliberately sets these girls up in order to make himself look more inferior and look powerful and smart when he's not at all. He's so stupid. He's like, yo, you want to come on a podcast? I'm like, sure. Uh, turns out that 8% of all men... Whoa, how does that have a way to have a discussion? <laughs> Just chill, nigga. It's not that deep. I'm like, yo, real ass niggas don't pay the box. Yo, here's the other thing, too. Bro. He's going to say real ass niggas don't pay the box. One's on seeking arrangements. The other one... <laughs> The other one is lying about having three girls at one time. Shut the fuck up. Fresh DM'd my sister at literally like actually multiple times. I'll, I don't know if I'm going to show screenshots, but I can if I want to. DM'd her multiple times, once at like three in the morning, like, what are you doing? Blah, blah. My sister has not answered once. Why? Because number one, you're a sexist. You're a misogynist. Who the, what girl is going to want to talk to you? Hello?
embarrassing. And who hits up a girl at three in the morning expecting some sort of fucking response? Like y'all clearly do not know how to talk to women. If you think that DMing them on Instagram at three in the morning is going to do something for you. The other one, you Shut know, the fuck you, up. Know, you know what kills me about Fresh? Like, if you listen to him, you know he has no kid. It's, no. it's, it's painfully obvious yeah. that this man, like, even when you go watch the, 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 the vlogs that he does, he's like, he has this whole thing, don't lead with money. And like in a bunch of his videos, he's like, all he has going for him is money. That's it. Nothing else. I'm like, bro, if it wasn't for your clout, you wouldn't be out here getting anything. Let's be real. That was so good. Oh, facts. Facts were said. I completely agree with everything they said. Um, so let's look over Myron's dating profile. I'm really excited about this one. What a pathetic fucking man. Oh, oh. this you on seeking arrangements? Is that you? No way. Okay, so he was last active on August 3rd, 2021. So clearly he's still struggling to get girls to this day. I bet a vodka soda you can't guess my ethnic background in two tries. He's from Sudan, if anyone didn't know. Active lifestyle, fine dining, flexible schedule, friends with benefits. Cool. Requirements, no offense, but my inbox is flooded and overwhelming. No out-of-state women, no out-of-state women or foreign women unless you intend to do a FaceTime call and meet my requirements. I get too many messages from out-of-state women. There's plenty of hot girls in Miami, so I don't need to import sand to the beach. Well, actually, we do quite literally import sand to the beach. But anyways, other than that shitty analogy, ugh. please convince me as to why I should pick you and fly you out here. I don't just take on any girl. So he does fly girls out. He flies girls out. If you think you got what it takes, shoot me a message and I can see if you're a good fit. No transaction type of women. I understand the hustle, but it's not my thing. Good luck in your search. If your bio is spoil me because I'm a princess, there are plenty of men on Seeking that are perfect for you. I mean, that's usually what Seeking Arrangement websites are for, is women literally looking for money out of men. That's what Seeking Arrangements and Sugar Daddies are for. It's for women looking for money out of men. So... Mm, why are you on this website again? If you're like being so hypocritical on these women who want money, you're literally such a hypocrite. Like you're fully on a website for sugar daddies when you're saying, oh, like the women are, you want money from men. Like you're literally enabling this by being on this website. Tell me what separates you from the pack. He's typing so much and for what? Like it... Ugh, this is so much to read if I don't respond don't feel bad I know you do the same thing all the time like what what's the point of saying this stuff like what is the point I don't get it after we just read all this blogna let's take a peek at their Instagram story that they posted yesterday expose us for using sugar daddy sites we have openly said for over a year sugar sites are a good dating tool but you should never use it to pay for bedroom fun since there's a lot of confusion, we will teach you how to use sugar sites without paying. What the fuck are y'all talking about? Do you guys know what a sugar daddy is? It is an old rich man that pays women for sexual favors or spoils and for gifts for company. So something here is not adding up. You're saying that you're using sugar daddy websites without paying then you're not a sugar daddy and you shouldn't be on a sugar daddy website. You should be on Tinder, Bumble, Hinge. Why are you on seeking arrangements if you're not paying girls? Why would you not just be on a normal dating app if you don't have to pay girls? You see how they're lying. They got caught and now they're trying to cover their ass by being, oh no, we don't pay, we don't pay. Yes, you do. And there's literally DMs of him paying girls to have sex with him. Hmm. Also, I also found um, this Instagram account. I'm pretty sure it's, it's his Instagram account because he's talking from first person. But let's just look at these pictures. I just think it's funny. It's called Unesthetic Footle. I'm sorry. I, I'm not trying to be like culturally insensitive. I genuinely just don't know how to pronounce the last name. We're going to go with Fadul because that's, that's the best I got. TBT, I love bus rides. <laughs> this one's a good one. Hi, I'm Amro. 
Again, don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just going to go with Amro. Great night last night. <laughs> this is what he was posting. Obviously, he didn't get girls. And obviously, he, that's why he's so mad. He's so mad that he didn't get girls that he literally got fired from being a secret agent at the Homeland Department of Security because he wanted to start a podcast on disrespecting women. Y'all see how pathetic that is, right? Like, he photoshops his pictures. So let's take a peek at that. Here is the picture in question. Let's zoom in here. Okay, so the one on the left is the real picture and the one on the right is the fake picture. Let's see all the things that he did. Chin implant, double chin liposuction, ear size reduction, hairline transplant, nose job. <laughs> And the caption, this is, someone wrote about this. They said, uh, really wish the red pill community spoke more openly about look maxing, not just lifting weights and making money. Okay. So this is why he calls himself Myron Gaines. And obviously for reasons, he calls himself Myron Gaines because he doesn't want all the information that he's talking about to be associated with his name because it looks very bad, very bad. It's popular in the fitness community to say you're Myron, bro when someone looks at your gains and gains obviously means like your muscles and Myron is short for admiring. He thinks that people are admiring his gains. That's why he calls himself Myron gains. Narcissist much like ego is through the roof and his gains aren't even like, he's not that built. Like he's an average guy who goes to the fucking gym. I, I probably have, just as nice of a six pack as he does. And y'all don't see me calling myself Myron Gaines. Like, bro, get a grip. <laughs> like, yeah, I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And I think I will be doing a podcast on, I think his name is Donovan Sharp or Donovan Sharpie, whatever the fuck, but he's next. Get ready. Thanks for watching. <laughs>